Devin Steve, are you ready? Lisa, are you ready? Lisa, you may start recording. So, stage two. That was the short stuff. Now we're into longer uh, presentations and, and uh, discussions. Um, and we're going to talk first about the seated WISPIS conventions, and then we'll eventually go into World Combat. So, the, the first of the seated WISPIS conventions is the World Con for you know, 2020 in New Zealand, Con Zealand. So, where are they to do their presentations? Thank you. Wellington, New Zealand. It's going to be sweet. Sure, the 78th World Science Fiction Convention. Right here in Wellington City. 29th of July to the 2nd of August, 2020. Come and meet some wonderful guests, including our very own Greg Brawmore from the world of Dr. G Invaders down here in the game shop space in Miramar. So come along and have a blast. And we'll all head to the stars together. <laughs> Mercedes Lackey. Hey, I'm Larry Dixon. And we're going to be in New Zealand for Con Zealand. The World Con comes to New Zealand in 2020. It's going to be so much fun. So come on down and join us in Wellington. Come say kia ora down in Aotearoa. All the way from Aotearoa, New Zealand. I'm Jacinda Ardern, Prime Minister of New Zealand. And I'm delighted that next year we will host Worldcon 2020 in our creative capital, Wellington. Here in New Zealand we have a proud history of great science fiction, movies, television uh, and books and plenty of dedicated groups, clubs and societies. So we're really excited about having this international science fiction convention on our shores. If you've seen Alien Covenant, the Shannara Chronicles or The Lord of the Rings, you'll have noticed some of our incredible scenery. And I can tell you, it really is as good as it looks. I hope if you do visit New Zealand or Worldcon, you can take the time to travel around, have some outdoor adventures, and experience our diverse culture, heritage, and hospitality. Don't forget to book your flights here soon. We look forward to seeing you and to making sure you have a memorable time at Worldcon. Again, our people are passing around with pads, pens, questions. Stick your hand up. So, will you be having subtitles for anything you do in future? <laughs> we plan to have subtitles for some things. Not, not just me, the Bostonian wanted to know whether that was English. Yes. <laughs> uh, sorry, it gets a little thick, what can I say? Um, and, you know, even Bostonian gets a little thick. How can the community be most helpful to you right now? 
we'd really love to hear from anybody who's interested in running different areas and helping us out. We have a lot of people who are excited to work on things in New Zealand, but that's a part of the New Zealand culture that sometimes it's quite difficult to put yourself forward for a new thing. So people would really like to work in tandem with more experienced people. So yes, experienced help is always welcome. What are your biggest challenges at the moment? I think that at the moment our biggest challenges are around making sure that we can fit everything that we would love to do in our budget. Speaking of fitting, given the increased amount of space that's necessary to, um, to accommodate access requirements and the capacity of your, your current venues, how many attendees do you think you can support? I'm confident that we can support at least 3,000 attendees. Um, what will you do if more people want to attend than that? We intend to cap if we need to, but we don't expect to need to. So New Zealand looks great in the pictures in summer. Um, <laughs> it, it, it may escape most North Americans to know, but um, that's winter in New Zealand. What's it like then? Well, like here. <laughs> New Zealand has um, got a pretty diverse climate, but in Wellington, it tends to be about, I'd say similar weather to what we got in London for the most part, or in London or in Dublin for the most part at that time of year. And Somebody wants to know whether they can get to New Zealand by train <laughs> from London. <laughs> there's always there's always one in every crowd. Um, do you have any news yet about pre and post con tours? There are some fan um, some f some tours that have been put together by fans that they're talking to each other about and that they're promoting amongst other fans. We are talking to a tour company, but we don't yet have an official thing together for before and after from a tour company ourselves. And and someone wants to know whether Norman will do a haka. <laughs> Norman has no shame. <laughs> so it's more a case of can they stop Norman from doing, doing a haka? haka. So would you pick two or three things that you're really excited about about your Worldcon right now and tell us what they are? I'm really excited about our guests and <laughs> have helping more people to know about our guests. I'm really excited about the Hugos and being able to introduce the Hugo Awards to New Zealand and being able to uh, introduce a, a Hugo voters party to <coughs> Worldcon. And I'm just really excited about getting to show New Zealand to on, um, you know, what I consider to be like my hometown, which is Worldcon. Given the lack of direct flights into to Wellington, other than from basically Australia, um, do you see any issues with um, capacity for internal flights? Absolutely not. Um, when there are interesting astronomical things that happen in New Zealand that can be viewed best from New Zealand. Air New Zealand has always added flights to get the capacity to where it needs to be to get people to where they can view these things. And so I have confidence that, that people will be able to get where they need to go. And if that means a flight needs to be added, then a flight will be added. If you had one thing that you wanted to tell people about who are Americans who are traveling to New Zealand for the first time, one cautionary note as tourists, what would that be? Only one? Just one. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say really um, the highways that we have in New Zealand outside of Auckland and Wellington themselves are similar to the old pre-freeway highway system in the United States, so don't assume that the same length will take you the same time to drive if you're choosing to drive. And 
can we drive there? I thought we couldn't take, I knew we couldn't take the train, but can we drive there? <laughs> <laughs> There's a steam train too. Cool, okay, anything else? Is there any other? No, right and fast, and legibly. Do you mean, is it possible to drive there, or will we allow you to drive there? <laughs> well, both, actually, I, I suspect well, that you can. It is possible to drive there. The sewerage is being connected, and electricity is coming. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, New Zealand has 220 volt. Yeah. Most of the rest of the world does. <laughs> with, with, with downhill and the wind behind it, which will be no problem at all in Wellington. <laughs> I'd say the other piece of advice for tourism I have is if anybody rents a car to drive to Wellington from Auckland, <coughs> return the car before you stop at the convention. You don't want to pay $30 a day to store a car in a city which is built for walking. Well, we will look forward to seeing you, or some of us will look forward to seeing you in uh, in, in Auckland. I mean, in Auckland.